everybody. Welcome back. Um, back with another book call. Uh, that will never end. So, you know, here we are. I think it's like number 35 or something. I don't know. I check in the title. It'll say. We got about, uh, I don't know, 13 or 14 books here. Before we get into the books, I just want to talk about this, like, super cool t-shirt I'm wearing. Um, as you can see, it says Booktuber. It's kind of a take on the YouTube logo, which I thought was super clever. I saw this on Lindsay Mead's channel, and she kind of co-designed it with two other Booktubers. And I just thought it was super cool and wanted to get one. And I will put a link to her blog down below where you can guys can check it out. And I think it also comes in a hoodie, which I may eventually go back and reorder. But I thought it was really cool and really clever. And, uh, yeah, so I'm a booktuber. Proud. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm going to jump into the books. Uh, I've got a selection of them from the library, ordered online, uh, used bookshop, and regular bookstore. So, going to get started. First one I have is an extremely beat up, broken spine, smushed up everything cover copy of Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. Now the reason I got this is because I still have yet to read this book and I uh, can't quite see it now. Let's see. Um, kind of down there, that white book right there, is my um, Barnes & Noble leather bound classic which I absolutely love the cover of, but it being white leather bound, no real way to protect it. I didn't really want to actually physically read that copy. I know it sounds silly. So I went out and bought another copy, but I guess for like 25 cents. I don't care that it's all beat up. I'm going to beat it up even more when I do finally get to reading this. Hopefully this year. Come on. I really want to see this in 3D. I'm not a big on 3D movies, but I just, I'd love to go see this in the theater again. Have you, anybody else seen this yet in, in 3D? Uh, let me know. Um, but yeah, so I got this one for like a quarter. No, what the heck. Um, the other three books I got from the library, this one is almost totally a cover buy. Um, that drew me to it first off. And it was a really good deal. It was only like $2. And it's the first in the series. It's called The Black Hope Enigma by Teresa Flavin. It seems to be like a middle grade book, and it just has the absolute gorgeous cover. And even on the inside there, with the feathers and everything. On the back it says, an old castle, a strange painting, and a mysterious labyrinth. And I'll read you the synopsis here for you. It says, for centuries, Black Hope Tower has remained an enigma. Rumors abound that skeletons have been known to mysteriously appear in the middle of a labyrinth found in the most famous of its rooms, the Mariner's Chamber. When 14-year-old Suni Forrest visits the tower and watches as her stepbrother Dean disappears seemingly into the painting itself, she goes in search of him and finds herself drawn into the heart of the Black Hope Enigma. This action-packed debut by Teresa Flavin follows Dean, Suni, and her friend Blaze on a journey to the center of an age-old mystery. Um, yeah, it's, it just sounded pretty cool. Um, the author is a former art school teacher and has the uh, jacket illustration copyright. So I'm not sure, but there's um, another person who did the jacket design. So I don't know if the author actually did the, the artwork on it for the front. But like I said, it just really kind of drew me in with the cover. There's the back. And uh, yeah, I hope it'll be pretty good. Like I said, it's middle grade. It sounds kind of like a reused theme, but, you know, like drawn into a painting type thing. I think I've come across that kind of theme before, but it sounds pretty cool. There's some illustrations within the book as well. I'm not familiar with this author at all, so it's sort of, like I said, total cover by, and we'll see if it's anything good. Uh, yeah, so that's that one. Um, and I also saw this one here. This is by Laura Miracle. It's entitled Bliss. It was a really great shape hardcover. It's only a dollar. And I'll read you the synopsis on this one. It's pretty dark, though. Uh, Bones, says a voice in my head. Tombs. I stopped dead in my tracks because it's not my voice that whispered these thoughts. And whoever's voice it is, it's not a nice voice. Um, while it's uh, with its stately, ivy-covered buildings, Crestview Academy seems impossibly grand to a newcomer bliss, but full of promise, too. It's here she hopes to make the sort of friends she never could growing up as the lone kid on a commune. With her crisp new, new uniform and manners gleamed from the wholesome TV shows her grandmother permits her to watch, Bliss feels ready for her new life at Crestview until she hears the voice. Crestview holds secrets in its stores, in its stones, ghostly hints of a long ago death. Sensitive Bliss hears a voice that speaks of terrible things and blood, always blood. 
Her fellow students, with their sunny smiles and talk of makeup and dances, seem untouched by this darkness, yet, as Bliss will learn, they too have secrets. When the simmering tensions of the present mingle with the dark secrets of the past, it is kindly Bliss who becomes the focus of a deadly struggle for power. So, yeah, sounds, sounds kind of chilling and creepy, and... Uh, and in the cover, it looks like it's smeared blood right across her um, her picture there. But, uh, yeah, that was pretty good. It's a pretty chunky size book. It uh, seems to be 444 pages, so quite hefty. And the next book, um, I had seen this at the same library sale over and over. I picked it up several times, thought about it, put it back, and just kind of passed on it until uh, I saw my friend Danny over at Pen to Paper blog mention this particular author. And she said this particular book was one of her absolute favorites. So I really trust her opinion. Decided to go ahead and go back the next day after I saw her video to see if it was still there. And it was. So I was super excited because I got for a brand new hardcover. Um, looks like to be a brand new hardcover for a buck. And this is The Radleys by uh, Matt Haig. And uh, she's currently reading The Humans, one of his uh, newer releases. It's not yet released, but um, I should say she's like an advanced copy. I think she's reading it's coming out soon. And she had mentioned this one, said it was super, super good, and I definitely went back and picked it up. And I'm going to go ahead and read you the synopsis for you. It says, there's a bloody little secret at 17 Orchard Lane. Just about everyone knows a family like the Radleys. Many of us grew up next door to one. They are a modern family, averagely content, averagely dysfunctional, living in a staid and quiet suburban English town. Peter is an overworked doctor whose wife, Helen, has become increasingly remote and uncommunicative. Rowan, their teenage son, is being bullied at school, and their anemic daughter, Clara, has recently become a vegan. They are typical, that is, save for one devastating exception. Peter and Helen are vampires, and have, for 17 years, been abstaining by choice from a life of chasing blood in the hope of their, that their children could live normal lives. One night, Clara finds herself driven to commit a shocking and disturbingly satisfying act of violence, and her parents are forced to explain their history of shadows and lies. A police investigation is launched that uncovers a richness of vampire history heretofore unknown to the general public. And when the malevolent and alluring Uncle Will, a practicing vampire, arrives to throw the police off Clara's trail, he winds up throwing the whole house into temptation and turmoil and unleashing a host of dark secrets that threatens the Radley's marriage. So, yeah, vampires living in the suburbs. Um, it definitely sounds really cool. Like I said, I, I kept thinking about it for so many times. At the time, I think it was about five bucks um, at the library, and I thought, oh, I don't know, I don't know. No, I've not heard the author. I've not heard of the book. And like I said, I saw Danny's um, video a couple days before I went back to the library to check it, and it went back down to a dollar. So definitely a great deal, and I'm really hoping I enjoy it as much as she does. And I'll put a link to her channel, so definitely go check her out too, please. Um, the next three books I ordered online, and this is a book I'd seen on quite a few hauls of a lot more recently than um, when I first had seen it, but I'd been wanting to get it and never went back online until just recently, and that is The um, Thorn and the Blossom. And this is a two-sided love story by Theodora Goss, and it's put out by Quirk Books. And I'll read to the back here. It says, One enchanting romance, two lovers, keeping secrets, and a uniquely crafted book that binds their stories forever. When Evelyn Morgan walked into the village bookstore, she didn't know she would meet the love of her life. When Brendan Thorne handed her a medieval romance, he didn't know it would change the course of his future. It was almost as if they were the cursed lovers in the old book itself. Now, it's got a slip jacket on here. And it has, uh, if you start from this side, you can read Evelyn's story. And if you start from the reverse side, you can read Brendan's story. And you can start with either side you wish first. And, you know, you just read your way through the book. So if you start with Brendan's side, you read his story, and then you flip over the book, and you read Evelyn's story. And the reason you're able to do this is because of the unique format of the book, is there's no binding on either side. It's strictly an accordion-type book, which I thought is the coolest thing ever. And for that uniqueness of it, I wanted to get a copy of it. And I just, I think it's really neat being, um, seeing the two sides of the story, so um, I'm not sure which person I'm going to start with yet. Uh, probably Evelyn's, I think, but um, it says you can go either way. And I just thought, like I said, I thought it was super clever. It's a really small little book. Um, I don't know if there's page numbers. Yeah, it's about 40 pages, so maybe an 80 page book altogether from both sides. And yeah, that's the Thorn and the Blossom. Uh, the next one 
I can't wait to dive into. I'm in the middle of reading like four books right now for this weekend. Hopefully I'll get through quite a few of them and then I can dive into this one because I want to finish the series. I didn't even know book three was out until actually Danny again from Pen to Paper Blog had seen my videos talking about this series and went to get them on her, her Kindle and discovered that book three had just come out. So she let me know and I jumped on it and went and got my physical copy of it. This is Losing Mars, book three in the Saving Mars trilogy by Sydney Swanson. I absolutely love this series so far, and I really, really want to know what happens next. So, yeah, I was I, I was dying when I heard this was out. I had to jump and get it. My only um, problem with it is it's different in terms of, it's got the same, you know, cover design and everything with the, the text and all that, so it matches that way. But these have, like, that rubbery kind of buttery kind of covers, and this is, like, a really glossy, high glossy. So it's, it's kind of weird. I've got one glossy one in the whole series. I actually like them more with the other finish, but anyway, yeah. If you guys definitely pick up this series, it's really, really good. I can't wait to start three. The next one I ordered online was uh, the second bind-up in the Soul Screamers series by Rachel Vincent. Um, I do own the first volume of the first bind-up, and the only thing I've actually read in that is the prequel, which I really enjoyed, and for some reason I didn't continue it right away, so I thought, well, at this point now I might as well wait until I can get all of the, um, the bind-ups. I think there's a third one coming out, I want to say September, but I'm, of this year, but I'm not certain, but like I said, this has, um, uh, My Soul to Keep, My Soul to Steal, and Reaper, and Reaper, I believe, um, it says first time in print. That I actually even have on my um, Kindle as an ebook. Uh, I think it was like available for free and I knew it was part of that series, but I didn't know where it fell into. So, I mean, now I have a physical copy of it as well. So, um, yeah, that's the second bind up in the Soul Screamer series. The next two books I picked up at Half Price Books um, the first one is Scarlett Thomas's Our Tragic Universe. Um, I hauled one of her other books before called The End of Mr. Y, and I've yet to read that one, but I've heard it's really, really good. Um, I really like the unique looks her books have. It's almost like a gold-covered book. It's really kind of cool. There's like a wolf on the cover and on the spine in the back. Could uh, a story save your life? And the touch I really like is the black, the black pages. The End of Mr. Y, I believe the UK version of it has the black pages on the side and the one I ended up getting did not which I was really bummed about but I think it's a really it's a really nice touch the weirdest thing about this book is how tall it is it's very narrow and tall it's looks like a typical um say YA book here and look how much taller that is and it's super skinny you can't quite see it. it's a little bit skinnier than uh, this but it's like a whole good inch size taller, which is really bizarre. Um, it makes it a little awkward. I'm not sure I like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll just read you quickly what the back is. It says, if Kelsey Newman's theory about the end of time is true, we are all going to live forever. For Meg, locked in a hopeless relationship and with a deadline long gone for a book that she can't write, this thought fills her with dread. Meg is lost in a labyrinth of her own devising. But could there be an important connection between a wild beast living on Dartmoor, a ship in a bottle, the science of time, a knitting pattern for the shape of the universe and the cuttingly fairies? Or is her life just one long chain of coincidences? Smart and trancing and buzzing with big ideas, our tragic universe is a book about how relationships are created and destroyed and how a story might just save your life. So, sounds pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's that one. And the next book I got from Half Price is um, The Complete Persepolis by, um, I'm going to slaughter this name here, Marjane Satrapi. And this is a kind of memoir told in a graphic novel format. After having read Mouse 1 and Mouse 2 by Art Spiegelman, I was really enthralled by that story, and I wanted to find something, again, that was similar to that. And this one um, I've heard about quite a bit and wanted to finally pick it up. And so, yeah, I was lucky to find a copy there. And this is a, a memoir of growing up as a girl in revolutionary Iran. Uh, Persepolis provides a unique glimpse into a nearly unknown and unreachable way of life. That Satrapi chose to tell that her remarkable story is a gorgeous comic book makes it totally unique and indispensable. So, um, yeah, it's got a lot of, it's all black and white. Um, black and white design. And not knowing, you know, too much about their culture and everything, I want a little bit more. It's about the veil and the veil is introduced in their society. Um, so, yeah, it should be pretty interesting. And like I said, uh, 
I really enjoyed Mal, so I wanted to go ahead and pick that one up. And the next group of books are books I got from Barnes & Noble. And the first one is Delirium Stories by Lauren Oliver, and this has um, the novellas of Hannah, Annabelle, and Raven. Now, I've read the first two books in the Delirium trilogy, Delirium and Pandemonium, and I've actually read Hannah as, as I actually had a copy of that on my, um, I think it was on my Kindle. But I've never gotten a chance to read Annabelle, which is about um, the main character's uh, mother. And Raven, I'm not even sure I remember who that character is or if it's someone who comes up in Requiem, the third book. Um, I have not yet picked up the third book in the series because I'm waiting for it to come out in paperback, so I probably won't be getting it until next year. So i um, not sure where Raven falls into that. I'll probably just wait to read that until after I read Requiem. But uh, it's a really super skinny book, and like I said, I've already read the first story, so I'm already a third of the way through. But uh, it's nice having that in a physical format. The next one I got is the fourth, yes, fourth bind up in the Death Note <laughs> manga series. And this contains volumes seven and eight. And in case you thought I had given up on this series, definitely not. I am reading my way through them all. Um, I just had so many other books to read that I decided to take a short little break after reading those first three. Again, it's a uh, black and white manga. Really cool. With all the black pages on there. Really enjoy that. And it's a super cool uh, series. I did a review on the first book in that in that manga series on my channel, so you can go check that out. Uh, the next one I absolutely had to get, because it'll complete the Gone series. <laughs> and that is Light. Super cool. Super cool. I'm reading book five right now, so uh, maybe I will dive right into that and finish that series up. Oh, it's going to be so sad when that's over. Uh, the next one I have is uh, Beautiful Redemption. This is by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. It is the fourth book in the Castro Chronicles, of which I have not read any of them yet. Um, yeah, my whole plan was to leave them guys over here, ready to go, beautiful creatures. I wanted to kind of read it before I see the movie. I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not. Hopefully. Um, I like the way that green and the greenish kind of cover matches the uh, green pages, but... Uh, yeah, this completes it. I wanted to make sure I got a hold of it in hardcover because I have the first three in hardcover. So I won't read what it's about, of course, since it's book four. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the very last one I have is just an advanced copy. Uh, I got this through work. And it is The Fifth Wave, the Fifth Wave by Rick Yanty. And this is put out by Putnam, a division of Penguin Young Readers Group. And it's coming out May 7th. And I will go ahead and read um, the back for you. It says, after the first wave, only darkness remains. After the second, only the lucky escape. After the third, only the unlucky survive. And after the fourth wave, just one rule applies. Trust no one. Now it's the dawn of the fifth wave. And on a lonely stretch of highway, Cassie runs from them, with a capital T. The beings who only look human, who roam the countryside killing anyone they see, who have scattered Earth's last survivors. To stay alone is to stay alive, Cassie believes, until she meets Evan Walker. Beguiling and mysterious, Evan Walker may be Cassie's only hope for rescuing her brother, or even saving herself, but Cassie must choose between trust and despair, between defiance and surrender, between life and death, to give up or to get up. So, uh, yeah, sounds sounds pretty cool. A little bit of an alien invasion type book, so it should be pretty pretty interesting. Alien invasion and survival mode. Um, so, looking forward to getting to that. Uh, got so many books to read, so... Um, let me know if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought about them. And if you guys got anything yourself, any calls, let me know and I'll go watch them. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.